Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your girl, Mitzi, and this is Mitzi. Let's think about it. Today, we are thinking about the unconscious trauma. Let's be honest. This is a good topic to really think about because we all have trauma. You know, I've said it in different top, um, different shows and different episodes with other guests, but today we're really going to focus on the unconscious trauma. So I have a special guest here today named Rihanna Mill, and she is really going to give us her perspective on what does unconscious trauma mean to you per se? How are you, Mitzi? Thanks for having me here. First of all, unconscious is the behavioral norms and patterns that adults develop over time due to their childhood environments. It all comes from childhood, what I call childhood trauma. And there's big T trauma and there's little T trauma. So big T trauma is something catastrophic, like maybe experiencing a rape or being in a car crash and losing a leg. Something like that is big T trauma. That's what most people would think about trauma. But the unconscious norms come from little T trauma, which is the ongoing, mostly um events that happen in your childhood. And it could be in the home or at school or in the community. And I've identified the top 10 childhood traumas from my work uh, within the schools, working with cool kids from grades, kindergarten, all the way through college as a trauma counselor, working in a mental health ward with kids five through 19, working in a drug and alcohol rehab with those um, kids there. And there's the adolescent ward. And then there was a ward for women mostly from the prison system. So no matter their age, their culture, their background, the top 10 traumas kept coming up. And those yeah. are the ones I identify in my clients and then see how they're impacting them today in life, love, and business. Well, that sounds amazing because it really shows that you have a, a grand perspective in a variety of main focus of trauma. But in reality, you have a, a very big outlook on what trauma and unconscious trauma is and helping so many people who really need that who really need to focus and confront it so I guess my next question would be is when did you realize that your unconscious trauma was affecting your life and you needed to confront it okay well I've been reading mindset work since my teens when my very dear friend was killed by a drunk driver uh, to me, that was a big T trauma, but nobody yeah. knew about childhood trauma back then. And I just asked to go to a counselor. My mom said, no one will ever go to a counselor. So I grew up to become one in year 2000 right? I practice. Yeah. And then my first marriage was a love trauma. And he ended up frauding my mother out of $200,000. Um, so that was a huge impact on my life. I divorced. I was a single mom and took me 16 years to pay that debt back to my mother. And of course, got nothing out of that, but aggravation. Um, but then I had a second love trauma. And that's what made me ask, why am I in these toxic patterns? I work hard. I'm a good lady. I'm a great businesswoman, you know, great mom. You know, what is the, the reason? And nobody had the answers. At that time, I'm a therapist. I have therapist friends. And I went to them asking, who all knew my husband, why would he do what he did, the second one, and nobody knew. And I said, well, I need the answers because I got to stop this pattern. And that's when I went into the psychological journals and did the research and came up with the top 10 traumas. There's more. But then I was going through my real career experience at that time and all the people that had traumatic backgrounds and what they kept telling me over and over again. So from that, in 2012, I created the Childhood Trauma Checklist, which yeah. is the top 10 traumas. And then the research helped me put the patterns and pieces together. So when a client comes to me recognizing the top 10 traumas and then like, yeah, I keep having these horrible relationships. I keep trying over and over and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I know that's a very frustrating place to be because you can't change what you don't know or understand. Once you get it, you understand it. Now we can do something about it and heal it. So what I do with my clients is heal the original childhood traumas, the norms and behavioral patterns that don't serve us, and then teach either to my single people how to have emotionally healthy love, exactly what to look for, the dating skills nobody ever taught us, and then for my couples... I heal partner A, partner B's trauma, 
And then uh, the third entity is the relationship, right? And the norms and the patterns that are toxic and change all those up. Teaching new communication skills that again, nobody ever taught us. So I kind of combine my speech communication skills from Penn State with my triple masters in applied clin clinical psychology and the coaching model, which is very educational. And that's the method that I use to get incredible change and transformation. You could only imagine the people that you have changed and touched and just truly evolved from their experience with you just because of your education and your own personal experience. Tying those two together is like a bombshell of knowledge, let's be honest, because <laughs> it's 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 an improvement that if you're willing to want to make that difference in your life, can truly change the directory of your life. For and real, it, it's with, so impactful. Yeah. And with the checklist of childhood checklist that really caught my eye when you told me that. And then when you brought it up here and I, I'm really glad that you did because it made me realize that not only when you focus your, your direction on children's counseling, it makes you realize that yes, children can acknowledge trauma that's going on in front of them. And I think not a lot of people talk about that. Not a lot of people bring that up because as a child, when you experience it and you want to reflect back and you realize in your life, you realize, you know what, this wasn't right. Everyone wasn't around normal. you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't more normal. And then the people around you, they just force you to repress it and just push it down and push it down because it's their normal, you know, or yeah. they're accepting it to be their normal for that time frame, the generation, the environment, you know, whatever the case may be, because everyone has experienced some type of trauma. So what yes. is that childhood trauma checklist because i'm curious what is on that list how can you really check that off well let me let me premise a, a couple of things first of all the research shows childhood trauma goes through at least three generations so if you recognize yourself in this list your parents had it and then their parents had it second in 2021 it was proven that 100 percent of us have childhood trauma when i was first doing this work they said about 90 percent of the surveyed group could identify with these top tens. Now yeah. everyone can identify something. So here they are. Um, the first one is if you grew up with any addiction around you. So because I was an addiction counselor as well, I named them. So there's drugs, alcohol, sex, meaning you knew your parent was a cheater and often mm -hmm. the child held the family secret. Um, uh, porn use, gaming, gambling, hoarding, spending, eating, TV watching, social media addiction, or just being on the machines all the time. And the child's put on a machine just to quiet them down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's addiction in the family. Number two is verbal messaging. So did you hear the words? I love you. Did you get cheered on and say, great job, babe. And even if you didn't win, you know, I saw you trying your best, you know, I'm really proud yeah. of you. Or it's like, you didn't do good enough. You could always do better. You know, the kid that gets all A's and it's like, why'd you get a B? You know, they don't recognize all the A's, you know, that kind of yeah. messaging or change your outfit. You look fat in that. That doesn't look good on you. You know, so these are called verbal put downs or slurs. And also, how did your parents communicate when there was an issue? Were they fighting, yelling, or was there loving communication during an issue? So that's number two. Number three is emotional abuse and neglect. Number four is around um, physical abuse, sexual abuse, rape, or molestation inside or outside of the home. Uh, the next one is around abandonment. And I named two types. There's fault and no fault abandonment. So a no fault abandonment would be if a parent happened to die early, if they go off to serve in war for their country. And believe me, I was in the elementary schools during that time and Normally, fairly smart kids would just be sitting there blank because they were so worried about, is my mom or dad coming home from Afghanistan or Iraq? Mm -hmm. You know, they just couldn't cope with trying to learn, you know? Yeah. Um, and then fault abandonment would be never being in your child's life or when the couple breaks up, you say you're going to see them or rarely do. And even if you're in the house, but there's no emotional connection, like you're not at the kids' schools and supporting them. Uh, this might be an example of a father working all day, coming home, eating dinner, then going to his home office and just barely interacting with the kids. So that's a 
thought abandonment. Okay, the next one would be if you were adopted, part of the foster care system, or had to go live in someone else's home because your parents couldn't keep you there. Even if it's grandma or an aunt, you're still not with your primary parents. Number seven is the one that most people can identify with. I call that personal trauma. So any way that you felt different. So you could have been a chubby child and tease for that. I was a skinny, gawky nerd and tease for that in middle school. You could have been the only African-American in all Caucasian school, therefore felt different or coming out as an LGBTQ queen, you know, teen and not having peer acceptance or family acceptance with that. So a lot of people can identify with not feeling good enough or not feeling worthy. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one is around sibling, sibling trauma, number eight. So that is either your sibling bullied you or you perceive them to be the golden child, the favored one, the star mm -hmm. athlete, the better student, and you're always compared. Why can't you be just like your brother or, you know, something like that? Or they were born with a medical issue. So that commanded more of mom's and dad's time with them. Trauma nine has two parts. It used to only be family trauma, but I brought down number 11 because that was community trauma. So when I did the list, community trauma was not that big of a deal. Now it's one of the biggest ones. That's where yeah. COVID falls in line. Our mother nature mm -hmm. events, flood, fires, hurricanes, wiping out huge communities, our mass shootings, our school shootings. So anything impacting a community at large is now part of nine. And family trauma would be like living in a dangerous area, growing up with a lot of black messages. We don't have the money to pay the bills kind of messages. Um, if a parent's incarcerated, our military family is moving every two to four years, making the kid the new kid in the school. So there's yeah. a lot around family and community. Yeah. And then number 10 is mental health issues in mom or dad. My bo baby be uh, boomer generation, we didn't see our parents go to counseling. So we kind of have to assume that there was something wrong. And the two most yeah. difficult for children to navigate is borderline personality, which is fast erratic moods. When they're good, they're great. When they're bad, they're horrid. And the child never knows what they're going to get. Yeah. And then bipolar is manic depressive. So depression can show up as anger or checking out emotionally. And then a manic phase, a lot of people think, well, that's the high and happy one. Well, it could be for a moment of time. Let's say you have a spending spree and you have all these great clothes, but next month when the bills come in, you're depressed for three months because you can't pay the bills. So manic depressive is also hard for kids to navigate. So wow. those are the top 10. Wow. I'm, I'm just blown away because your description on that top 10 is on point. There's nothing left out. I honestly feel like you have not, you, you've touched every single point that can cause a traumatic event down to the nitty gritty. And it's true. Yeah. It's yeah. honestly true. There's nothing that I can add. You just made me think about everything like, wow, wow, wow. Be just because it's like some of those that you stated, I can relate to. And I didn't realize it because we accept it to be normal. We've, we've allowed ourselves to make excuses for the ones around us, for the, our environment, for the situation that we're in, that we, it's just part of life. You know, that saying exactly. of it's part of life is, it's ridiculous because it's, it shouldn't be part of life, but Sally, well, I mean, what example. is your opinion on that? Yeah. Yeah. I had a client, I went through the childhood trauma checklist, which is free on my website for everyone. And she didn't mark physical abuse. And then later when I was questioning her, she goes, yeah, you know, my dad would hit me with a switch. And I'm like, so you had to go choose the tree branch. Cause I had students tell me that as well in the schools. And, um, they're like, yeah. And I said, but you didn't put down physical abuse. She goes, well, that would just happen to all the kids in the neighborhood. That was just normal. Yeah. You see, so she didn't even see it as that was physical abuse. And that's how disconnected the trauma can be for people. So when I do a 90 minute private session, which I call a discovery session, you know, I see the initial and there's always usually more traumas, <laughs> you know, people yeah. might be two or three, and then we end up with six because they just didn't see it or feel that that was trauma. But then what's showing up in their relationships today pointed it for me to see it back mm -hmm. then. So I say, because this was happening between you and your dad, this is why this is happening with you and your partner today. 
you know, so let's talk about how do they show up in relationships? So our listeners have a little bit of idea there. I mean, if you have a partner who has jealousy and control, that's usually the verbal messaging was very derogatory and nasty and personal trauma. They were probably bullied or put down or didn't feel good in, enough in some way. That's where jealousy and control comes from. Impulsivity can be from a child growing up with a lot of lack. Maybe they're now having a good job and all the money coming in. It's like, but I want that purse or I want that shiny red sports car. I'll be able to pay for it, you know, and yeah. it's a cycle of, but I want, I want, because they didn't have what they really wanted when they were kids or the opposite. A lot of kids growing up in very wealthy home, the only way they got love was big gifts and not their mom's or dad's time or affection. Yeah. Right. They're grown up, brought up by nannies. So it could be two different types of scenarios. Same result. Anyone dealing with abandonment issues that will lead to often codependency and what we call RRS, relationship repetition syndrome. So that means, let's say your conscious mind says, I know this guy's not good for me. He verbally abuses me, puts me down. He lies all the time. So you break up and then the core need for love is so strong that you bring them back after all the, I promise I won't, <laughs> you know, yeah. and the, the cycle is usually about 10 to 14 days. And the research shows these break up and get back together an average of seven times before the healthy one is, says I'm done. But it's such a strong pull to keep that love object because they did not have a lot of love growing up or they're always trying to win that difficult person. Like they were trying to win the difficult parent. Same type yeah. of feeling, right? Um, addiction can come from that imposter syndrome, something we call, you know, perfectionism or blaming behavior. Our sociopaths and psychopaths are at the highest end of this scale. So high eight, nine, or 10 with severity levels of nine or 10. Wow. So most people are in those levels. But there yeah. are a lot of sociopaths in our world. So when you're out in dating, is. you better know what to look for, you know. Right. So it's really important. And just for our listeners, the definition of a sociopath is someone that uses another for pleasure, profits, or lifestyle advancement. And if they do things of harm, they never apologize. You will not get an apology. So some people are, I'm just waiting for him to say, I'm sorry. And like, you're not going to get it. Like yeah. I never got it from my ex-husband. He would never be able to say, I'm really sorry that happened to us and to you, that you ended up with that debt. You know, so, never got an apology. <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt, but it, I mean, that made me think of um, what is the real difference between a sociopath and a narcissist then? Because a lot of people will say that they're a narcissist and not really associate with a sociopath because a sociopath is a stronger word. So it makes them mean even crazier and that makes you crazy for being with a sociopath so they just put it in a narcissist title i mean is that kind of what it is because it sounds like they're pretty no, much kind too of many the same. people throw around the word narcissist and don't really know what it means i had to correct somebody at a party two weeks ago i'm like those two men are not narcissists you know it's <laughs> like, why would you even say that um, the severity level is narcissist worse is sociopath worse than that is psychopath what is the psychopath and narcissist and sociopath that kills? That's the worst. Okay. I like the way that you put that easy. Yeah. Simple. The sociopath is worse than the narcissist because again, they have some underlying target. They are targeting someone to use them for their own pleasure, profit, lifestyle advancement. Like I was ripped off from money. I was used for money. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and they never apologize, you know, so that is a clear definition right there. Okay. And they are also always narcissists. So it's always about a narcissist. It's always about them. They have no empathy. That is the biggest way to describe it. Uh, if they hurt you, they often don't apologize. Um, but sometimes they can, they usually have a very good social face. You know, they can be, everyone yeah. loves them and then horrible yeah. behind closed doors. Um, you know, so there's, that's a whole different podcast right there. Yeah, you know? right. Let's, let's be yeah. honest. It, it really is because you can really go in depth. Yeah. In just those mental health it's issues. It's like four because to five different types of narcissists from 
someone who's actually a good doer, you know, really helps a lot of people, but they're really focused on that and their career. And some people say, oh, that's all she's into or he's into. They're a narcissist, but that's a healthy narcissist. There's actually a category for that. And then there's the malignant narcissist that is in line with the sociopath. So there's a scale of all the way in between. Yeah, it, to be honest, if somebody's dealing with a narcissist and really want to know in depth, go talk to Rihanna because I swear your brain is absolutely amazing. Like I could just oh, kick you. it with each category. Like if I could just keep having you back, I would because goodness, oh. your mind is absolutely amazing. I can listen to you yeah. talk and I would just be like, oh, wow. Because you have, you really make me think about mental health and trauma and our environment and our families and generational curses and generational habits and how it, how it just ripples effect just by a simple thought the good or news is, Mitzi this is all healable this this can be healed if yeah. you're someone that is really a pro and what the listeners have to look for is CCTP, Certified Clinical Trauma Professional and I'm advanced level which is level two um, there's a lot of people say, well, I went through trauma, so I'll be a trauma coach and charge $29. Like it, yeah. they have no mental health aspect. You have to be a licensed mental health counselor or licensed clinical social worker to even get CCTP because this is a very serious condition for people. It keeps yeah. them stuck in anxiety. Most clients come to me are very high anxiety, high depression, uh, jealousy control. You know, they've had numerous uh, very toxic and painful relationships. So there's a lot of pain there and mental health work that we have to do to get them, what I call on the other side of the rainbow where they're feeling fantastic about yeah. themselves and their lives. And that's when, you know, that's why I love what I do because we can see that transformation together. We work as a team to make that yeah. happen. And the trauma, you know, impacts a lot of different areas of your life, seven different areas. So there's physical disorders like irritable bowel syndrome, fibromyalgia, Epstein-Barr virus, other immune dysfunctions due to all this stress in your life. It's proven people's lives are cut short due to all the stress that they've never handled. Um, the emotional difficulty, definitely trouble recognizing emotions, having a lot of shame or guilt or excessive worry. Um, relationship issues, which I just went into mental health is depression, anxiety, negative self-esteem, fear-based negative thinking is their like their norm. They're always, you know, catastrophizing or feeling like the victim. So -hmm. that's part of the mental health. The behavior is a poor self-regulation or social withdrawal, loneliness, fear, fear fear-based negative thinking, um, alcohol and drug misuse, just to escape the pain or the mental Mm -hmm. worry. And then two areas that impacts our children, which is brain development for a child, changes in gene expression. They had proven that from the offspring of those from the Holocaust survivors, that their DNA was actually changed to be programmed for higher anxiety because of the lineage and the changed gene expression and impaired stress response, the catastrophizers, That's a sign your childhood trauma has not been healed. And then I saw this in my students. They can't learn, you know, when their trauma ties cortisol is up and memory and learning goes down. So very often my elementary kids were identified ADHD. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. They have trauma in the home. So I was doing meditation in the school and positive behavioral management to get these kids to settle down find some joy and faith and hope that everything's okay, you know, where their parents are serving, or I'd have to talk with the families and do family work so that they understood that their child is suffering in school because of all the cheap drama going on in their household. No, I think that is amazing. Absolutely amazing that you're able to do that because it's it's real. Let's be honest. Yeah. It's really real. And there's no way of avoiding it. And I think the sooner we all confront it and acknowledge it, then we can help not only ourselves, but the next generation as you're doing. And the simplest things I truly believe can help. And I guess to start wrapping up the show, what would be, I mean, I know you said some oh, amazing advice already, but what would be some lasting 
words that you can leave my audience, even if it's for one single person that can possibly change their life, what would those words be? Well, the number one thing is get help. And especially if you're a parent, because I help the parent and then you teach the child what we call the mindset for success. So, I mean, our slogan is now is the time to create the life you desire and have the love you deserve, because that's exactly what we do. It's a two-part program and not to wait. Like if you recognize that you've had some of these traumas, you can just go to my website. It's my name, rihannamilm.com. On the homepage is a free ebook. And in there is a childhood trauma checklist. And then there's four free love tests, some for singles, from for couples to identify the health of your relationships. Uh, or are you really ready for a relationship? That one is for singles. Um, the first 60 pages of my number one best-selling books, Love Beyond Your Dreams, Break Free of Toxic Relationships to Have the Love You Deserve, and Live Beyond Your Dreams from Fear and Doubt to Personal Power, Purpose, and Success. That's all about the mindset and then the love. So that's part of my curriculum, and the books are excellent. So I can get the first 60 pages of that, and then my podcast is Lessons in Life and Love with Coach Rihanna Milne. I have 120 shows out now. So uh, help yourself to that in my YouTube library. I think I have 320 resources at this time. So there's all kinds of free, free goodies for you guys to get yourself started. But, you know, if you want to meet with me personally, get yourself a Life and Love Transformation Discovery Session and let's get your healing started. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it first from Rihanna Maline, and you will find her lovely photo on my website, mitzithinking.com, which gets you a direct link to her website. So if you're not trying to Google search or try to figure out the spelling, don't worry. Just go to my website. Her lovely picture is there. You click right there. Boom. Get all the information. I'm telling you, I was scrolling through, and I was just like, wow, this is such great stuff. I wish I knew about this when I... Oh, girl, I ago. wish I you know what I mean? I wish I 15 I years old. <laughs> exactly. say, a lot of aggravation, that's for sure. Exactly, exactly. And if you feel like something is in your life that's stopping you or you just feel like you're stuck, maybe it's time for you to see someone about your trauma because usually that's what's holding you back. That's that attachment that you don't even know that's attached to you, you know? So this is something that you really need to think about. And I'm glad that I was able to have you on my show so that we can really think about this because I truly believe you brought so much to my show that I didn't even know I needed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you have me. Thank you. That's it. That's our mission to help change the way the world loves. That's what I was um, trying to teach as many as I can. So I really appreciate you having yeah. me on the show, Mitzi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that's it, you guys. Always keep thinking. Bye.